Councillors could resume their seats. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Vanjie. Oh, you've shaved your beard off. <laughs> I didn't notice. Um, right, so good morning. First of all, uh, apologies. Uh, there have been no apologies received. Uh, the, uh, and no declarations of interest, which brings us straight on to the draft annual plan. I, I should note um, the passing of Councillor David Cox, who, um, whose funeral is uh, happening on, on Friday, uh, and we will have a full acknowledgement of his uh, service to the city at the City Council meeting um, on Thursday, so that, that's when I will um, acknowledge that and call for a, a minute's silence. Um, given that this is an annual plan meeting, it doesn't run to the normal agenda uh, of a council meeting. Right, so now what I'll do is I'll just outline um, the process that we're going to follow, and uh, for those who've been through, I think everyone's now been through an annual plan process, uh, I'll just run through the process again. So the first thing that will happen is that uh, there will be moved a, um, a temporary suspension of uh, various standing orders, uh, the limitation of, on members only speaking once, the limits on the number of speakers, the general procedure for speaking and moving motions, foreshadowed amendments, lost amendments. So we will set those aside and that enables us as a council to have a, a, a reasonably free-flowing um, uh, discussion over whichever amendments are raised and then uh, the, the question. I will uh, ask people to uh, move uh, amendments, so I'll, I'll, uh, first of all I'll have um, staff provide uh, some updated information for us as we go into this uh, process, uh, just reminding people that uh, what we will sign off today is the draft uh, annual plan and it will go out for um, consultation. Uh, the, the first group that will come in and make submissions on it are our community boards and they are very deliberately at the beginning of the submission process uh, so that, um, or the hearing process so that we can uh, hear directly from the boards in relation to the matters and the priorities in their respective areas. Um, the, so the amendments are dealt with and with each one we will ask staff if there is an impact on, on, on rates and ask them to calculate that. That may mean that we have to take the odd break in proceedings just to ensure that they can do that work for us and then, uh, then we deal with each amendment as it's, as it's moved and seconded and, um, and then debated and then carried. Um, Everyone doesn't have to participate in debating every single amendment. Um, and then, uh, then we will have a sort of final break so that we can get just an update from staff about where we're up to, if it's necessary, and then we will come to debate the draft annual plan. And that is really the opportunity for all councillors uh, to essentially have their say about what their priorities are and about uh, what they hope to see uh, by way of public feedback and um, what they hope to achieve uh, in terms of this, um, this annual plan, which is 2019-2020. Um, and so then that, that motion will be put. Then we move on to the, the next motion, which will be the um, adoption for consultation, which is the consultation document and approve a, a, a process for consultation which uh, I've indicated will start with the community boards um, and there will be public notices, all relevant information available, etc. So, um, and that will be uh, potentially another debate and then uh, we will, uh, and I think at that point, um, we will re-adopt standing orders and declare the meeting closed. <laughs> so, um, so the, 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 the timing of this is, um, it will just depend on how, how the debate goes, but I'm, I'm hoping that it will be a nice uh, free-flowing um, opportunity for councillors to have their say about the draft annual plan. Questions, yes, Tim. Could we have a, 
at the start of this what rate the rates are going to be. Yes, that I'm going to, we're going to start with the staff, but we need to suspend standing orders first. So yeah, I just think you know, as we go around and we debate and, and we put um, amendments forward, yep. etc., and we look at those cost impacts for the public who are watching to see where we started with rates to where we end up is actually yep. very important. Yes, very important. Yeah. All right. So. Um, all right, so I will move uh, the resolution to temporarily suspend standing orders that are listed. It's Andrew seconded. I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Um, and now we move on to the, uh, the, the, the main resolution, and I'll move that the Council approves and adopts the information contained, etc. Um, in the draft 2019-20 annual plan, and that's seconded by somebody, Mike. <laughs> um, and uh, and now um, I'll uh, um, hand it over to staff and ask them to uh, perhaps present where we've got to and touch on the rates uh, that we're at at the moment. Um, thank you very much, Madam Chair, and uh, good morning, councillors. So. The, just to give you an update on, on where the rates are for the draft plan, you'll recall in the LTP we had originally indicated the rates for the 1920 year would be around five and a half, but as a result of savings and additional revenue, the draft as it went out was at, at 5.02. Um, I'm pleased to advise that we've reviewed the figures from QV which indicate the growth in the city and so the starting point now for the rates for today's discussion are 4.96. So that's from 5.02 down to 4.96. And to give you an indicator, we had said that the standard residential property of around half a million had a rates of 4.98. That's now down to 4.92. 4.92. Okay. Is there anything you wanted to add, Carol? Um, just a really minor little thing. Um, we had a media query came through last night around the eco-central recycling processing fee, and um, we just a slight correction to your paper in 3.42, where we talked about not being able to ship that product overseas. We are still shipping that product overseas and, continu and continue to do that. So just a minor just correction there. Sorry, I didn't. I, I didn't notice that because um, the, the, yeah, the problem is yeah, okay, all right. So the, the problem is the increased processing fee, not the ability to ship. Sure. That's right. All right. So um, so now I'll I'll look around the table. Oh no, I think we had questions first because I think there were there are a number of councillors had some questions that they'd like to canvas. So Yanni uh, and Phil Glenn. Sarah. Yeah, I was just wondering, um, in terms of the fees and charges, whether we'd increase the fees um, for the cruise ships in Akaroa to pay for the increased um, costs? And if not, why not? Um, they have been increased by a rate of inflation, which covers the costs, the additional costs of having a tourist there. Are we able to put them up even more, given that that's been feedback we've had from that community. The advice we received was that um, you wouldn't normally change with such late notice because a lot of the um, a lot of the cruises have been advertised. That was taken on advice from staff, but who spoke with the tourist people. So, but they have gone up by the rate of inflation. It just seems hard to understand. Some of the fees and charges have gone up a lot more than the cost of inflation. Um, but these ones aren't, and we've had pressure from the, the community. Very few have gone up by more than the rate of inflation, unless it's a very small dollar amount, and you need to increase it to the next available coin. Um, I think you'll find most of the fees increases have been very moderate this year. Okay. Um, the second question was just in regards to the development contributions policy. I know that central government were changing the DC's legislation so that we could. Um, put things in that weren't currently eligible for DCs. And I know that we've also got a growth fund that we're underspent um, that we are collecting um, funding for. Can, can you just 
um, give some clarification as to when do we review the projects that we put in that get that are eligible for that DCs um, either collecting the DCs or funding from the DCs going towards doing. Uh, yes, you're talking about the change uh, that's been signalled to bring facilities back in. Um, because facilities at the moment are currently not eligible for DCs. Um, we are reviewing our list of, of current contracts and ones that have been built to see which is eligible, but the legislation is still not passed and therefore until such time as it is, um, we obviously can't make a change. But things like local playgrounds and parks and areas that have had high growth like Waltham, when, when do we as a council get the opportunity to put those things in? They would come through in each year when you sign off on the annual plan or the long-term plan, whatever it is, they will include growth projects. And the um, DCs are reviewed after the annual plan is set because we have a problem otherwise with trying to get continuity and reduce errors. So after the annual plan has been finally resolved on, the DCs are re reviewed at that point to see what projects are in which have a growth component. So to answer your question, you get the chance to review it when you're reviewing the list of capital projects. Right, okay. So we should do that as part of the submission process, put in new projects in areas like Waltham, which have had huge growth, that don't have projects fund currently on budget. already in there, then yes, you would be looking to review it between the draft and the final. Um, and just the final question in relation to DCs, the, the Central City 801 incentives review, is that going to be done in time to inform our final draft plan being signed off in June? I'm not familiar with with what you're referring to. I'm sorry, and I'm not the best. Eight oh double one. It's is that what you're referring to? Yeah. It's just that I signalled an amendment. But if there's a stream of work going around, that would currently actually review that that DC's policy for Central City. <coughs> then it's probably better to let that work actually do its course and come back to us to inform us on, on that. Brendan, but can you help out with that? Um, speak to Councillor Hanson's question. Yes, the review on the incentives will be completed uh, prior to the final annual plan um, being adopted by Council in June. Right. So maybe instead of um, a, note, a note in that regard might, might be more appropriate. Okay, mm -hmm. yep, no, that's fine. Um, and Yep. Yeah, just so, and just the final question in terms of the, um, the capital program, the, there's a number of projects that, that we've put on hold that um, have been signed off by the community boards. Um, and I just wondered if, in terms of communicating that through our capital program list, is, are we going to have community board projects sort of, um, like we've done with the LTP or previous annual plans, are we going to have a list of projects by ward with an explanation as to what's happening in terms of changes in timing and budget? Um, yes, I believe there is a schedule of changes and it will be by ward of um, changes from the LTP. Right. So we, and are we able to get any more project detail around the capital projects in terms of what the project scopes are? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not the best person to answer that question either. Dave, are you able to answer that, please? No, probably. Well, we could get it. I couldn't get it now. Um, no, not now. But in terms of the consultation or the engagement, the ability for people to see what the projects actually are, so that they can be informed when they make submissions, is something that you know people have have raised, um, particularly through the LTP last year, um, and we still don't seem to have that information available for people. So we've got a big capital program list, but if you actually want to click on and see what that project is and why it's a priority and what the budgets are and what the scope is, you, ca you can't do that, which makes it very hard for people to, to make submission. We, we have distributed the information around to the councillors on those big forms and I'd have to go and talk to our team. I thought we'd given it also out an award list uh, of our capital program. Yes, yes, I think what Council's asking for is the ability for someone to click on and see the scope list and, and we've, as we've said before, we can't do that at this stage. No. To have everybody be able to click on something and then read the, you know, the short performer around it. Right, so where we've got some funding for things like car park renewals for Cuthberts and cows, 
we, we don't have any information that the community can see actually that's why it's a priority. We did get the good email from Brent Smith over the weekend with a list of the conditions of a number of our assets, which is actually really, really useful information. You can actually see um, some some areas that you would think, you know, if, you, if a community board or a councillor or a person in the community might want to make submissions on when they can see the different asset conditions that is not part of this draft annual plan document. It, so it is the intention this time to um, uh, refer the specific you know, requests that come in from the community to the community board areas so that the community boards themselves can see what their own residents are kind of indicating by way of priority. And, and I think the community boards will be able to look more carefully at the capital project projects in, in, their own, in their own wards and I think have a better understanding of that level of priority. So I'm hoping, I mean, look, it, it, in the future I think we will get to the point where technology will provide us with the solution that you're asking for today, but unfortunately it's just not ready um, at this stage. But it's very much front of mind, and I think, you know, the Chief Executive's nodding. Um, it's, a, it's certainly a, um, it's always been a priority to get as much information out into the public arena as possible. Okay, thank you. And j I mean, just to clarify, so the information that we got sent over the weekend, are we able to distribute that publicly to people to help them inform their submissions? I haven't seen the information, so... Sorry, I don't know about it. Mary? That, that information was uh, requested at the community board and plan forum. That was just on recreational-based decisions. So that's all it was. It's not the whole program. Uh, but that's a, that's a request from the community board. You yeah, know, it's really good question. I'm just asking, but I don't want to send it on and get told like something to the media or to the community. But, so I was just wondering if there was any re reason why we couldn't pass that on to people so that it helps them. Look, look, what it is. It, what would be what would be better is if it could be placed on the council website, yeah, so correct. that I mean I think it, it would make it much more accessible. I think if that was able to be done. So we could put it on and send a link out. Yes, they want to distribute yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Um, Phil. Thank you. Um, my question is in relation to the uniform annual charge, particularly because clearly. Um, in the document, the fi some of the fixed charges, um, like for example waste minimisation and, and land drainage, there's a, a clear increase in, in costs for, for those things. But it's not clear to me from the document as to the reason for the increase in the uniform annual general charge part alone, given that's a component of it all. I just wonder if someone might have explain that. It was the result of a council um, discussion and it wasn't exactly a resolution because it was a workshop where we were asked to increase the uniform annual general charge because it hadn't been addressed for a number of years and we came back to you with three alternatives and settled on the middle one. Um, so it's it's not a staff initiative, it's in response to a request. Okay. Um, the, we can and Andrew is here to provide you with more information but I know if, the thing to recall is that while it looks like there's a big increase a big percentage increase for properties worth 200,000. Houses don't fall at that end. Houses are more sort of above that and on. And Andrew can provide you with the detail of the actual dollar increase because the rates at the at that end of the property range are obviously lower than they are at the top end of the range. So in that case, what I'm saying is I think the percentage is a little misleading. It's better to look at the dollars, but we can give you those figures, but not right this minute. No, that's okay, Diane. Yeah. So basically, though, there was no there was no other reason as to why we increased that. No, UAG it just hadn't been addressed. Fixed. It had not been addressed for quite a number of years, although we had increased the, um, which is also a fixed rate, we had increased the rate on wheelie bins for the, for the recycling. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Glenn. Uh, thank you, and thank you, Diane. That was going to be uh, in the area of my first question, because at first glance, it doesn't look proportionately fair when you look at the lower uh, value uh, houses, so uh, it would be good to have a breakdown over uh, perhaps CG how how uh, much 
a proportion of the uniform annual general charge is in in the various bands of of valuation that you know could be greater, for instance, than the lowest. That, that info would be good. I just had a couple of other questions. Uh, one that both around fees and charges. One is on page 162. I don't know whether you need someone else. I'm afraid I do. I don't. Yeah, have, no, that's okay. I don't have memory well, of it. maybe we can note it. It's it's a new charge and yes. it relates to traffic management plans. Yes. I have a concern over the potential impact of that on future uh, events in the city, which uh, already find traffic management plans challenging. So perhaps if we could uh, have some info later, right, would, sure. would be great, please. That That's, uh, that's page 100 and... 62. Yep, 62. CTOC Real-Time Operations Professional Services, new charge, $258. They all add up and, and that will have... I imagine quite an impact. The other is around uh, burial plots. <laughs> Have a distressed constituent who is saying that uh, uh, their elderly parents are not able to purchase a, a burial plot at the moment because apparently they've been put on hold. Uh, now I've looked at the bylaw or the policy rather relating to this. Uh, could we have some information on that? Because I know. There's some discretion in there, but I'd like to know whether that's uh, so it's somehow. Not the fee. It's the fact that the plots aren't available. That that you is, is, is that clear? Sorry, just to, just clarifying what I think you said. Right. It's not the fee it's that you have a problem with. It's the fact the plots are not available. No, I, th it's, I think it's, Brent it's might being be able to purchase it. I think Brent might be able oh, to right. help. Yeah. I think it's the pre-purchasing of them. Yes. People are buying them up in advance. Yeah. And then they're not available to satisfy their current need. Right. So. I believe there's a whole problem pre-purchasing, not on the sale of the box. Ah, right. Is, is that a delegated decision? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Um, there are areas where you've got pressure in the city with a lot of material plants. Okay. So, can I... Okay. Yeah, can I? Um, you recently agreed to a change to the bylaw yeah. um, and uh, around cemeteries, and this was canvassed at that time. Okay. Right, Thank you, um, Sarah. A couple of questions, and um, on um, page one one four, and I know Mary's got some information on this one. We've got a um, uh, some increases to the community hall hire. Um, which seem like quite big increases. And I know that we're proposing to change the categories of some of these these halls. But one of them, for example, at the moment looks like, um, so the new Woolston facility, which is quite a small hall, would just kind of fit 50, and would be going from $50 to $84. It's an increase of 68% for family groups in a low-income area sort of wanting to do a you know 80th birthday party or something for a family member. So, so we are uh, proposing that this is deleted in the draft document, that's the first uh, row of that, and actually at the moment we're updating the ske schedule of fees and charges. This didn't go through the sign-off process. So, we'll so these increases won't be going the through first, the draft? The first row, row of increases won't be going into the draft. That's the where the significant. Oh, so the, the, the significant one there. Mm -hmm. So okay. the the other schedule the was what we reported right. today were about two and five percent increases across the uh, facilities. Yeah, yeah. So there's still um, thirty two percent. I mean, it's 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 only sixteen dollars, but for community events. Um, which uh, it's on page one one four there. I think it's the third. There's the private oh. social, the, the family functions, then there's commercial events, then there's no, so community that events. Whole, that, those whole boxes. Oh, that's that those all of those boxes, not all just those actual boxes first. in that first row. Great. Yep. Cool. Thank you very much. Great. Um, and the next one is on next quick question on um, the some of the maintenance on our water supply, I think it's probably one for Dave. I'm aware that um, there's some work happening to look at um, the water supply network and what work needs to happen to keep that um, from breaking so much. Um, I'm just wondering if that work will be done in time to inform any funding decisions 
So I think Dave's actually doing something else. <laughs> sorry, I'm asking about water. Sorry. Yeah, here. sorry. Um, the, the work that's being done on the reticulation system at the moment, um, looking at, because we've got quite a high breakage rate at the moment, and yeah, yeah. I know at the end of last year we had sort of 350 calls a week for, for broken pipes and things, and at a time where we're trying to save water and our communities are saying, well, but we're letting it leak everywhere. Do we have enough capacity to be fix, A, fixing them quickly enough um, when they do break, um, and B, when is the work going to be done um, to work out how much additional funding we might need to do more um, proactive rather than reactive um, renewals on the reticulation supply? Well, the work has been done, and we did present it uh, when we looked at the various options uh, for renewal strategies. And uh, when we did the LTP, we decided that we would actually put a renewal strategy that held um, the reticulation at the same level of um, asset class that we've got. So it's a continuation. So we're continuing with that program. Yes, we are getting more breakages, and we are putting in, and we're talking to the contract to put in a, um, the amount of resources needed. We can't obviously not have those breakages. We're prioritising on uh, things that need to be done immediately, one day, three days and ten days, and so that should be done. And the last report I got was 92% within that three-day category were being met within that three-day category. It is putting pressure on our maintenance budgets because it's reactive maintenance rather than um, uh, planned maintenance. And reactive maintenance, unfortunately, is a lot more expensive than um, plan maintenance. So, so being that that's increasing at the moment, that reactive correct. stuff, and it's really putting money on budgets, would it be more sensible for us to actually start putting a little bit more money on for that proactive um, reticulation work um, to, over time, increase the standard of our reticulation network, <coughs> stopping the reactive stuff and actually improving our reticulation supply? We're going to bring a paper to That's what I thought there was coming. you shortly yeah, um, to do with the whole of the water supply because we do believe this will be another issue just around um, our future water safety plans, uh, discussions we're having with the uh, drinking water assessor and the DHB. Now, I think that's programmed to come at the end of February. Um, I'd have to actually talk to Helen, but it's... And that will have some elements that are beyond what we call beyond wellheads, which is all to do with reticulation and to do with um, 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 reservoirs, etc. The issue that you've got, it's not actually a matter of just throwing $2 million at it here or there. It's actually a commitment to a large program if you are actually going to try and get rid of all that grade five and try and move from a reactive. You've got a little bit of a um, perfect storm. You've got the ageing uh, AC infrastructure, which is if we'd had an earthquake or didn't have an earthquake, it's getting near the end of its life. And um, we've obviously also got the earthquake uh, residual damage. So there's a couple of perfect storm events there. Yeah. So this report um, may have some funding implications, or we might decide there will, will be enough information in there. But if we decide we wanted to, to, to get on with this program of work to improve it, that we will It would give you some through. guidance, but like I say, it's not a fix, an instant fix overnight. It's, it's actually a, long -term. a, a longer term yep. uh, okay. issue. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, uh, Dion? I just had a, uh, a question around the Avon Otakaro River corridor funding that's on um, the start of the page seven. Uh, the extra money for 1.06 million uh, for planning costs was was that not included in the? It's an additional operating expenditure. Was that not included in the long-term plan? I just wanted to get an understanding of where that's come from, and also you've got a revenue part here um, in 3.44 or 3.4.4. Uh, for extra revenue from the Crown for Avon Otakaro River Corridor planning, but you haven't stipulated exactly how much money there is for planning. So I'm just wondering if there's going to be a rates impact for this planning, whatever it is, um, or whether it's recovered from that extra revenue. I think the intention is that it will be covered from that additional revenue. Well, there's a difference between intention and is. I just would like to know because obviously I thought all of the planning was done by Regenerate Christchurch. So I just want to know whether the city is going to be pinged again for more planning costs. That, that may be a misunderstanding of the 
distinct roles. Yeah, so it might be. Like Regenerate Christchurch is the regeneration planning function. Yep. Uh, the planning function, as I understand here, is for the development of the of the um, bike, you know, the the major cycleway route that will traverse the the length of the Taikaro Aben River corridor and other elements of stormwater and various other things that we have to be doing to um, to advance the development of that um, that area. But I, I do remind people that the Otakaro Avon River Corridor Regeneration Plan hasn't actually been submitted to the Minister yet. And when it is submitted to the Minister, there is a period of time within which she considers that um, that plan. Mm -hmm. And it is once it is it is actually gazetted that it becomes uh, it, it, it changes our district plan to meet the um, requirements of it. I think the point that I'm trying to make here is that why is that not? I mean, we knew that we had to do that, um, you know, the, the bike track and all that other stuff at the long-term plan stage, so why is this an extra revenue or an expense now? And has that been recovered somewhere um, by the Crown specifically um, in I the extra revenue part? I can answer. I think it's actually covered within the comment itself, which says that the information wasn't available at the time the LTP was developed, and you'll recall mm. we actually did say we don't know where we are with the um, 300 million and other stuff that the Crown had indicated might be available but hadn't actually confirmed was. And so, therefore, this money here does say is to come from the um, Crown's Capital Acceleration Fund. So, the reason it wasn't in the LTP is we didn't have the detail. Now that we do and know what the Acceleration Fund can be used for, we've included it in. So that would come from the $40 million allocated part? Yes. Yeah, but it's still going through a, a process of, um, what's it called, an um, investment case. It's not a, called a business case, but um, it's a treasury process called an investment case um, before that's signed off. So, And that's the process that the Canterbury Multi-Use Arena is going through at the moment too. But we have to prepare for the... For, for, for getting on with the job. We know that the money's committed, but we just have to get the investment case through. This is a bit, bit all over the place, really. Sorry? Okay. Well, I'm, I may not have described it accurately enough. I think you've described it OK. OK, <laughs> all right. Um, Jimmy. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Quickly, there's three, three questions. First, the uh, question is on uh, page 22, the funding source. The dividend and the interest uh, are received accumulate seven percentage. You break it down, how much percentage for the dividend? Oh, you mean what is, what's the difference between the dividend and the interest? Yeah, 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 yeah. The relative percentages, I, I can give you that, but I can't give it to you right this minute but I can um, report it back to you um, before the meeting's over. Okay. The second question is regarding to the uh, expenditure, you particularly emphasize $598.9 million. Uh, I just want to know, regarding to all the regular uh, maintenance, particularly for green space, reserve, park, and public verge, etc., how much percentage or how much the funding for those the, to go? Um, again, that's a figure I'd have to um, come back to you on. We've got the detail, but I, I don't, I can't just give it to you right this minute. Okay. Last question is uh, on page the uh, one. Have to borrow it. It's one. One seventy one. <laughs> the cap, capital endowment fund. The balance available for uh, the allocation is minus. 175k. I just want to know this minus where the funding you know, come from. It's a borrowing or it's from some other source of funding. It's a variance to the long-term plan, so it's simply just reflecting the movement in the last 12 months. Yes. Um, can we just? Sorry. Um, It's because um, more money has been allocated to Christchurch New Zealand events. Yes, I understand, yes. but it's a minus. I just want to know because well, we that's are why it's showing a minus because more money has been allocated. Is, uh, 
110. Okay. But the uh, error case 285. I just want to know this minus 175. What it's saying is from? there's less funds available yes. than that we thought in the long term plan because yes. more money's been allocated to Christchurch New Zealand than we plan to do in the long term plan. So it's really just reflecting the result of um, the decision to allocate more money to Christchurch New Zealand. It's yes. just a straight um, arithmetic change. Jimmy, if you read the if you read the three, yes. so down the bottom, yes. that the long term plan said there would be uh, one point six five eight. Mm -hmm. The annual plan one point four eight three. The difference is one hundred and seventy five. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. know. Yes, I just consider the balance. You know, that yeah. the, where does the hundred seventy five k come from? Because allocates two eighty five, but actually, you know, available is only one k. <coughs> It's whether it's borrowing or from some other uh, project to transfer you know, to, to, to this one. I just want to know. Well, there was slightly more funds available because we carried forward a slightly higher balance than we thought, spent slightly more than we thought, and that is the answer, 175. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. That's my right. question. So, um, Andrew. Thank you. Um, going back to the Mayor's recommendations in the 2018 um, long-term plan, um, and I quote, the O'Kane's wa uh, Bay Water Supply Project will be funded through the LTP Water Supply Renewals Program with further work being undertaken on design and community engagement in 2018-19. Now, my understanding now is that, that um, at that time, the wrong funding source was identified for this project because it's not actually a renewal. Um, my aim and motivation today is to ensure that this project is in fact funded and that it is in fact funded from the correct source. Um, so would that, that's not included in this draft budget at, at, the, at the moment, isn't it? Would require an amendment to put it in there? That's correct, award, yes. And that amendment would require $2.7 million worth of funding to be added to the capital budget? 2.6, yes. 2.6. Not in this financial year. And that, that would be in the 2021 financial year. Yes. All right. That's great. Thank you very 2020, much. 2020-2021, is that right? Yes. But yeah. not the 19 not the 1920, right. which is the but focus the of this following annual plan. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Right. Um, David. Um, thank you. Look, um, I'm I'm very impressed that we've um, actually further reduced our, our rates uh, percentage, and it seems that a lot of it has come from um, increased rate take on, on new build and uh, you know our, our projections for what we were going to get from rates has, has gone up. I'm a little, I uh, just wanted to clarify I suppose in terms of our valuation adjustments during the rating year, uh, I note on page 25 that rates charges cannot be changed to reflect the adjusted value until the next rating year. I'm talking about new builds. Yes. So, so what's the sort of impact, or do we sort of look at look at that on a? Um, we can't claim it this year, but it bounces into next year. Uh, and, and look, we've had sort of un, some unprecedented um, building growth in some areas. Commercial still going ahead at, at, at a fairly um, sizable rate. Residential slowed down a bit, but it's still up there. Um, what is the impact on on our um, on our rates from not being able to charge uh, to bring these new um, projects into the into the rating system on an increased valuation? The impact is is more of a timing difference um, under the. Order and Council, as you correctly say, we could pick up those values throughout the year and therefore we recognise the revenue during the year. I, I don't have, I'm sorry, I have, don't have the number because we're not capturing it anymore and we're not monitoring it, but we are now back, the same as every other Council in, in the country, where we, as you say, recognise the growth throughout the year and then build on the rates, build it into the rates for the following year. Um, because we, as I said, because we no longer have the order in council, we're not capturing it. So I can't give you the correct answer. Okay, but it would, 
It's, it's a timing issue. It's a so timing issue. If, we are, if our predictions aren't quite right in this year and we experience more growth, um, we, are, we get the benefit in the next um, yes. year. Yes, but if conversely, we, if we get it wrong... If the growth's higher than we think, yeah. then, as you say, we recognise the benefit in the following year. If we overestimate the growth, then we have a rates. Um, we overrate and therefore we have a cash deficit in the following year. Which is something you we try very to, hard um, not to do. do what we've done this year and have the benefit. Don't go too high. Yes. Okay. Are there any other questions? Yani? Yeah, um, just on page 49, I see that there's a, I think it's a new project added, which is the Hethgate SMP. Um, and I note part of it is to integrate projects within the land drainage recovery program and CCC transportation. So I was just wondering why that's got funding out so far away when we're doing all the capital works along the Hethgate at the moment, like the dredging. I was really interested in um, if there is a catchment, if there is a stormwater management plan, or whether this is a new project that needs to go through a consultation, engagement, needs a process to do like the Littleton one. We're going through at the moment, we're going through our global stormwater consent, which actually does um, list stormwater management plans at a program that we have to go through. We've got to get them then signed off through that global. This is the uh, program that reflects what we have put in that submission on those um, stormwater management plans, and they'll be updated. We do have them, but they will be updated. We've got to also take with us the community and all the rest of it. So just because of the resources of going right across all our catchments, we've got a program of priorities which has been agreed between, well, principally agree between ourselves and ECAN, it's obviously subject to the commissioners saying mm -hmm. that's right because it, um, um, we've just put in the last submission to them uh, on Friday. Uh, we're waiting for them to see whether one they've got any more comments to make. That will then go back to all the submitters and they'll come back to us. But what we've reflected in here is the timing that we've put in that... Um, so, are we, so maybe it's better for us. Are we going to get a report on the scope of the Heathcote Stormwater Management Plan integrated catchment plan? I, I would hope. It I will. Just, it will. Like when, are we, when are we getting the report on that work? Well, we will bring you a full report. Well, I, th I haven't really. This we, has all we, got caught up in the global consent. It is. This when is we a get the massive stormwater task right across every Correct. catchment. Right. Correct. And we will bring that to you when yeah. we get the. the final draft of the global stormwater consent, you'll have to say, are we satisfied with it? Are we not satisfied with it? If we're not satisfied, what are we going to do about it? If we are satisfied, then what are the implications? And in this annual plan, we've put in, I think, $445,000 to actually start implementing part of that, what we think is going to be the global stormwater consent. Right. Um, but we will have to come back to you once we get that and then we will actually work with you about all the various details, how we bring in all of the um, catchment um, committees, um, Natahu, uh, all the interested parties, obviously. Yeah, so right. you, you, you've had to it sort of kind of estimate a, a certain value that you've that we, we've put on budget in order to um, facilitate the re resolution of the global storm, stormwater consent. And what we've also tried to do is spread the workload so it doesn't all happen in year one, so we have a huge spike of work and effort so that we can actually have a team that's working their way through and the priorities of the catchments have been um, worked through with the um, communities, the objectives and obviously Environment Canterbury. But that's great. I was just wondering if there's an ability to bring forward that funding to get synergy with the cycleway that's... Um, just been built and proposed to be built? I, I think it's been reported already through Lynette that we are looking at any opportunities of synergies as those programs go through and so we are looking at those and funding and um, while Lynette's not here, our, our capital project manager, that happens on all of our projects where it's actually feasible to do. For some reason, sometimes it's not all feasible, sometimes the projects are so different that there's no synergies between them. Mm. And so we are working through to make sure that we 
maximise the opportunities that do come on our whole capital program. Um, and just the final question in relation to the PT. There, there is money that we're putting extra for roading projects and as part of the acceleration fund that we've gone in to government request for. But I note that in the draft annual plan, in terms of our capital program, mm -hmm. um, there's 900,000 for the Palms, 800,000 for Eastgate, um, but then there's quite significantly more for other PT like Northlands and Rickerton. Um, and I just wondered, are, are we going to get an opportunity to discuss the scope of what we expect for PT in places like the Palms and Eastgate um, and apply to government as part of this process? Like, I just don't quite understand how we're signing off on the scope of what's suitable. You know, e.g. Rickerton's got the the interchange and the separate facility, whereas I think the Palms and Eastgate at the moment would just be on street ones. So All the PT to... does go through the ITI committee, as you do, it's a various concepts, um, some of them go out. I think you've got to recognise some of them are for purely facil facilities around um, interchanges, some of them are for actually street um, bus priority lanes, etc, etc, so um, those different projects have different scopes around them. Uh, we are bringing them as forward, as you've said, uh, Councillor Johansson, to try and maximise uh, whatever opportunities we can uh, through this um, additional enhanced um, FAR, but that means we have to get them in in the next three financial years or two financial, three, next two financial years, yeah. So the scope that we decide on will happen through the ITI committee to inform that FAR request, is that correct? It will go through council, but the detail will go through the committee as it normally does. Okay. Um, thanks. Yep, Aaron. Yeah, so um, just some questions around fees and charges. When does that come up for review next of stuff that's not in fees and charges and some in there that could possibly drop out? Would that be during this process? It could do, yeah. And a couple um, to highlight would be like around sports, basically everyone pays to use any, anything from a rugby field to a tennis court, but we don't seem to charge for our water sports out at Lake Roto Kahatu, yet we need, we're required, well, we need to put in toilets out there that are going to cost a million dollars. There's no cost recovery, whereas in our other sports ground there is a cost recovery because a rugby team pays or a soccer team. So what's the plan there? Or is there one? Or when can we potentially raise that? Well, there's a lot of fees and charges in here for off anything from 136 down. You can go through all the different from yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not casual use, so you can't book a lake. So well, you can if you're on a jet ski, otherwise you run over the swans. Yeah. Yes, but are they paying? Because when I asked the um, rangers last night, they said they weren't. So. So, so do you want to do that? Is, is that possible? Because so, so it could be raised during the, yeah. the, the, the process, um, but we wouldn't be able to adjust it today. No, no, um, that's why I was just throwing it. I'm not putting it up as an amendment, it's just yeah. questions because of... We could uh, bring a specific paper back yeah. just on the on that whole question, but if they're already, if, the, if there is a lease involved, then that presumably... Yeah, then that's fine, but it's just be good to have that yeah. clarified. For casual use, and a lot of the toilet yeah. provision for casual use. Yeah. Yeah, although none of the clubs have got toilets out there, so. Yeah, well, going back a number of years, um, there was going to be a, a joint, the club was going to build a building, but most of the cost of getting those toilets are going to the services. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. half a million. The, um, okay, we'll so. Yep. Thank you. And then the other fees and charges is um, one is uh, thinking of vibrancy in the inner city, is the buskers one. Why do we have the buskers charge, and is it it's still necessary to keep it. So I thought we didn't charge the buskers for the CBD. Um, or for, uh, that was further down. Um, 
Whiskey's come up. Uh, what page is it? Um, I'm just going down. There's a lot of fees and charges. I've got a lot of facilities. There's a, so I've just skipped over gambling. Um, property files. Skip the dogs. Okay. Resource consents. Oh, Buskers is page uh, 164. 164. It says outside designated areas, preparation of license and issuing, but do we even need it? It's just ones like that, do we? Uh, that, I think that, I, 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 look, somehow I've got it in my mind that um, you don't need a license to busk in the CBD. Is that right? We know some of it. Some of it you still do. So there's some places you don't, and some places you do. So I thought the CBD was specifically. You know, there's licenses. There's still some places. There's a street performance permit of thirty-seven dollars on our council mm. website. Um, those, are, those are licenses. Yes, I know, but I think you don't need a license if you're in the CBD. You know, if you're playing a guitar or Outside something. Outside designated areas. Um, yeah. So. It's outside designated areas. So, who who can answer the question on designated areas for and do, buskers? Do we even collect this? Like, does hey? how many people are coming in a year? And I know we have no busker police, but no, 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 no. I'm I'm pretty sure that we don't charge, we don't ask for a license in the designated areas, which are, as I recall, the CBD. Mm. Somebody must know the answer to the question, surely? No? Okay. Uh, um, right. If somebody um, could find the answer for us, that would be good. And then the other one is we charge hair salons. And I'm not sure what the um, problem is we're trying to solve there, but it doesn't say beauty parlours and the uh, services you receive in a, uh, a beauty therapy clinic are a bit more personal than a hair salon and uh, waxing. Sorry, where is this? <coughs> it is. Isn't that under legislation and the um, Leonie's not here? Yeah. Um, what what the page? compliance issues? <laughs> um, it's <laughs> we've this had had this is discussion before, it's right? Maybe not with Aaron. No, yeah. no. Uh, um, this is a former hairdresser, you know, making this point. Yeah, yeah. So they winched to <laughs> me, but the um, yeah, it's just that it only has hair salons on there, and of course we do bars and, and food. Where? What page? Makes, uh, I'll go back up. Sorry. Um, I think we can find out about that. I'm, I'm yeah. fairly certain it has to do with legislation and compliance under the Act. And um, extending past our hairdressing salons will be a completely new level of service across um, beauty salons. Um, I think you mentioned brothels before, that sort of thing. Yeah, so, we've got funeral fun yeah. directors. That makes sense. Camping grounds. So yeah. they're, they're all categorised together. That's page 156. It, um, it's a legislative, I think it's something to do with legislative, and my is. advice would be to get um, specific advice from the relevant staff involved before yeah. um, considering any wider yeah. um, level of service. Oh, and I'm not saying we go after the yeah. um, the <laughs> beauty salons, but the, I mean the beauty clinics, but it's you've got one industry singled out that is less personal than a number of others, uh, and obviously uh, I'm assuming it's these a are all thing. These are all legislative compliance. Yeah. Well, who yes, legislated that a hair yeah. salon should have a license? Other premises requiring a health licensing registration annual fee. So health aid. Yeah. So why is brothels not in there? That's I would have thought that you could get the odd breach. Perhaps in there. you could direct the question to central government. We're we're simply enforcing the obligations that um, central government put on us. And the us. prostitution act doesn't require um, the administration of inspections of those premises. So. Um, it is um, uh, yeah, we do for to do with mm. legislation and existing yeah. legislation versus new legislation that's right. come through. Yeah. I still, my advice would be let's get the relevant staff um, yeah. to provide okay. the get information. Get the advice. Oh, thank yeah. you. So, so you think that because hairdressers are covered, then it should be all fringe activities? Oh. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I thought we might be able to just shave off some more funds. <laughs> <laughs> Clip the ticket. <laughs> Right, okay, so um, are there any more questions? Pauline. Just a good one, thank you. On page 56, just the funding for the uh, Northern Arterial, Cranford Street, I um, wonder why we've got uh, the 12 and a half out at 2122 when I think we were going to have all the work done by the time it opens. 
So, that's a question for you, Dave. What page, sorry, 56. 56? Yeah. Opening at the end of 21. Yeah. If you remember, this is an agreement between us and NZTA that we are actually um, they're funding us up front and we are funding back um, because they want to bring that project forward for us uh, or they want to build it forward in line with them and we didn't have the money and so they're bankrolling us in the front end of it but we've got to pay them back at the back end of it oh, okay. and so that's why it's not in line with the construction so it's a bit, a bit, a bit of an unusual one. Right. Yep, Dion. I've actually just got one more question I, um, I looked at last night and thought I'd ask about it. Uh, on page 169 we've got a whole lot of um, reserve and trust funds which was quite interesting reading in itself. Um, all the little bits of pots of dollars that we have floating around for different things. I was like, oh, hang on. Um, but anyway, the question I have is around the cash in lieu of parking. So um, we've got $651,000 <coughs> in that. And the point of that, um, if you go to page six, 169, is to provide, sorry, I'm reading the wrong line, um, to hold contributions from property developers in lieu of providing parking spaces uh, used to develop parking facilities. So we've got this uh, DC's rebate thing that's going on, so obviously that's a development contribution for the infrastructure um, under the ground, which we are um, rebating at the moment because we've already built the infrastructure. But the district plan allows for properties in the central city to be built without car parks. Um, are we still charging developers who are getting DC rebates a fee for cash in lieu of parking? You don't know? I would like to find that out so that we can actually start addressing that issue because we're seeing more and more developments allowable under the district plan to um, you know, build developments without on-site car parking. But if we're going to be filling up our streets, we're having issues already in the central city. We've got this fund, we should be using it and we should be charging for people in that respect we'll accordingly. Check with your staff and Thank come you. Back to you. Are there any other questions? Well, thank you all very much. I'll, um, I'll open it up for amendments. Vicky. I have two. Uh, no, you can. Uh, well, well, we'll do one at a time. Okay. So. Okay. So the first one relates to the report that we received at um, finance committee at the last meeting, um, which indicated that we were overspending in this area and that unless we make some adjustment, we will be uh, doing that again this year. So I think it's much better that we actually make the adjustment. This is clearly rates neutral, so there is no rating impact from doing this, but it does mean that we don't run the risk of an overspend next year. Um, so we had a report on the, um, in the parks area and in the roads area, um, and what we had done in our resolution was to make provision for not spraying Roundup, which you will have seen from the latest American case, Monsanto has been found guilty of causing cancer. Um, the, uh, so that we weren't doing that near, near the public, um, but we didn't increase the amount in years one and two and three. Um, so we have been overspending and we got that report and this is to rectify that situation so that we're not faced with that situation at the end of next year. And I've just allowed for a joint figure between parks and roads, and that additional 850,000 comes from additional rates growth, which I think is an incredibly conservative figure, and I think even Di could live with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, we'll just um, ask that question down the end of the table. So, um, I mean, we, th th this is um, allocating ahead of a review in May of the of the growth. So, are, are you reasonably confident that we could I'll resolve just have to this? Check as to what the percentage increase is, if we could do that, do you want me to do it right now, or do you want me to come back on it? Uh, well, we could we could come, we could come back to this this item and debate it uh, after you've provided us with the with the numbers. All right. Yeah. Perhaps we could just we could just reiterate our earlier comments though about
prudence and that the city growth, the actual growth will be known in May. So, yeah. 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 Tim. Just to clarify, this, we, we need to ask questions of staff on these now because in debate we can't. That's correct. Yes, it? that is true. So the question, when we use the term no rates impact, it's being designed because we are expecting a rates increase to offset that. So you could also say that... Well, yeah, an yeah, increase in income yes. from rates. <laughs> However, that also reduces our ability to reduce the, co the, the level of rates. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, OK, well we'll, 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 we'll come back to this one. So um, would you like to move your other one, the second one? Um, this is very simple um, and one I think there'll be general agreement on, um, and that is that we are anticipating a reduction in the contribution to regenerate Christchurch, and we note that staff will be coming back to us on, with that, with further information in March. Um, but what I'm very clear that we want to do is that I appreciate there's a timing difficulty in this um, and that the report comes back to us in March, but this at this meeting we're setting the draft annual plan um, and I think we need to signal to people um, that, that this is a clear intention of the council. Um, if uh, we could debate, uh, but we probably won't, um, because it's still to come back to us, the amount uh, that we would reduce that figure by. Um, in, in my own mind, it's around 3 million, which would be 0.65% uh, reduction in rates, uh, which on Di's figure this morning of 4.7%, 4.7 million being 1%, would be about a 0.65% reduction in rates. Uh, which I think people would appreciate. I think the important thing is that Regenerate Christchurch had a clear goal. It's about planning uh, and it was about its capacity to do various Regenerate plans. Um, all they really need to have, uh, in my view, is the staff to be able to ensure that that can happen because most of the work actually in making those things happen comes to the Christchurch City Council anyway. Um, so. Uh, I think it enables them to do all the things that they need to be able to do um, and signals a change um, in the direction of Christchurch so that it's now more about getting on with things. Um, and since we are con currently contributing four million a year, as is the Crown, I think we can easily anticipate a reduction in that contribution. Um, I appreciate the process that has to be worked through, so this is um, something that will come to us with information in March, but it is important in signalling to the public what their rates are going on that we don't include the $4 million in our actual um, draft, in our actual annual plan. So I think it's important that we send a clear signal about this. Right, and that's been seconded by Councillor Goff, so I'll open it up for debate. Yanni? Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I, I totally agree with the comments that have been made, and I think it's really important that we signal a process around this, um, because clearly we've got a regeneration ecosystem in our city, which is very costly, uh, and what we need to ensure is that the money is best spent on doing, um, rather than just, I think, on getting continuous streams of advice, um, and often from multiple agencies in the city. Um, that are all publicly funded. So I welcome this. I think it's really important to get it done so that we can look at it in terms of our final draft plan being <coughs> signed off. Um, so very supportive. Glenn. Thank you. Yes, I do support. I suspect what we're going to find out is that uh, their trajectory would match what we're thinking anyway in, in terms of uh, operational funding. But I would not only perhaps uh, look at uh, Regen. I think when it comes to the the final adoption of the plan at the end of June, and and when we uh, meet uh, to look at uh, all those components of the opex which serve to um, get us to land on the final actual rate, that we we look at everything. So not just Regen, but uh, any organisation in which we may have outsourced or any agency, and and we ask at least two questions: Are they adding value? And is it measurable? 
So I think that's really important. You know, there is a lot of money <laughs> going to certain agencies, and I think it is our job as elected reps to really hone down on these costs. Thanks. Jamie? I'll, I'll be brief with this, but very happy to second it. Um, it sends a very strong signal via a resolution that the council expects funding to significantly reduce in this space. And, and to put it bluntly, my honest view is that Christchurch is over agencyed and we need to lead a step change in this space. We're going to be consulting on this annual plan, so let's see if Christchurch agrees with us. Uh, Andrew? Thank you. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think that um, what we've got here in this statement um, sums up the feeling of, I would imagine, most of us, quite possibly all of us around this table. Um, there are processes underway um, that allow for this to run its course in a way which um, is, is respectful and quite possibly even planned. Um, clearly, we are only um, one partner um, in the um, Regenerate Christchurch setup. We have um, a minister who we need to work with closely on this, and the mayor and minister have a particular role around the statement of performance expectations. Um, if we follow a funding follows function argument, then it will be logical that as the function um, of Regenerate Christchurch over the next period is determined by that statement of performance expectations, then um, a funding decision would follow. And we're certainly signalling very clearly here today that we would expect to see um, a reduction in funding that um, really would reflect, I guess, what we're also expecting to see in that statement of performance expectations. So I'm pleased that we've got to a position today where we can signal that expectation, um, but allow a good and, and correct and respectful process to run so that we can arrive at the right decision before we confirm the annual plan in June. Thank you. Uh, Tim? Thank you. I, I totally agree with this, and I think it, we have such a good relationship with the government at the moment. I think to go hand in hand with this, and I think it's been made clear by both parties that we want to do this, because it must be incredibly frustrating and confusing for outside investors and organisations coming to our city and wondering who they actually go to. So um, I think the sooner we can do this, the better. Um, I also have a, a note of caution. We have been told constantly by our ratepayers that a reduction to the rates would be a very good thing and what they would like to see. So rather than when we do finally get some reductions in um, our costs, rather than looking around like a lolly jar, that we actually start looking at reducing the rates and listening to our ratepayers. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'll just um, add, um, I, I, I won't oppose this, um, and I really appreciate the effort that's gone into finding um, some language that uh, is respectful of process. Uh, the government has made it absolutely crystal clear from the outset that the institutional arrangements are a matter for the global settlement, and uh, I think it's really important that we work in the spirit of collaboration and partnership uh, with the Crown in order to get a good outcome here. And um, I agree with colleagues who have said that we need to look at the whole regeneration ecosystem uh, when we're considering these matters. So on that note, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Thank you very much. So now we move back to um, our parks and roads budgets and glyphosate, which I'll pronounce correctly now. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, have we got... We're not ready yet. OK, we'll move on to the next one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sarah. I actually need to move that we get... Because it's because the community hall stuff is actually still sitting in the AP, even though they're happy for it to go. Yep. We need to move to get rid of it. Oh, OK. Yeah. That's fine. So, um, so need some wording to get rid of the, um, that first... So have first we... boxes. So the community hall's base charge... Now, what, what page is it on the...? 114. 114. So we need to remove the proposed increases. So can, can we... Um, so is it the all of the um, charges under Section 12 Community Support? Is it all of those? No, because the bonds and things stay at the actual higher cost per hour that um, it hasn't gone through the process. So it's okay. the, the, that first box, the one with the private social events, commercial events and community events fees going up. Okay. So the, the, the community Did halls, the, weekend event hire, they're all fine? Um, Mary, was the Harvard Lounge one approved through the process or is it? Yes, it was. 
It was, okay. Okay, so, and that was so to remove the, um, the items, community hall charges identified on page 114 amended to reflect the fees and charges in reply, which has removed the 68% increase in charges for private social, okay, no, that's fine. Yeah. So that's absolutely crystal clear. Yeah. So that's moved by Sarah yeah. and seconded by yeah. Anne. I'll just put that motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Well done. Have we got an answer? Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'll, I'll, we'll, 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 we'll. <laughs> it's ten forty-three, so it, we'll stop at eleven. So what's the what's the next amendment? Who who else had an amendment? Andrew. Andrew. So it's just a quick tidy up regarding um, O'Kane's Bay. Um, I sent some wording through to Megan just a moment ago. I'm yep, not sure I think it's landed. There it is. Two point six million. Oh, so that's all there. Yep. Yep, fantastic. So I'm happy to move that. Okay. So just the one, two, three is fine. So that additional wording isn't. Yeah, well, I'll second that because I feel like I was out at O'Kane's Bay and um, we were very clear about this. Indeed. Thank yeah. you. Happy with that wording? Yep, that's fine. Is, that, does it, is this wording good? Yep. All right. Um, so I'll put. Oh, I'll put that motion. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I'll open it up for debate. Sorry, Tim. Look, totally agree that, that this needs to be done. But it, when we were given advice on this, the fund where it was coming from was actually incorrect. This will be an, a rates increase, so I would prefer it to have been looked at the renewals budget, uh, the um, new capital works and look at what would have to be shuffled around to allow this to happen without any rates impact. There is no question I support this being done for this community, but we were given incorrect information, so I would have liked this to have been readdressed through the, the um, New Works programme. So um, although I do support this community and this work being uh, done, I can't support the, this being an impact on rates. Even though it's not going to be this year, it's going to be next year, and that's just for me, just moving the deck chairs around, to be quite honest. Phil. I want to support. Um, supply of drinking water is vital. We know that as a council. I don't think Tim is saying anything differently, and I just think it's absolutely straightforward that we do this. Yanni. Uh, just a question. Should we not also no, consider... No, we're in debate. Oh, okay. So... Do you want to couch a question while you're debating away? Or? Oh, I'm happy to. Um, I think we should be seeking external funding, so I really welcome number three. I don't think we do that enough as a city, um, but I, I also think we should be considering going to the Regional Development Fund. Um, you know, this city, when we amalgamated forcefully, forcibly were amalgamated with Banks Peninsula, had picked up a huge cost, and many local small councils around New Zealand are getting extensive government assistance. Um, we, we don't tend to get that, and yet we've got a huge cost of um, a lot of these projects on the peninsula around the three waters in particular. So any support we can get from central government I think would be welcome. But I do agree, we need safe drinking water in our city, and I think this is part of the cost of doing that, but I think it's a worthwhile thing to do. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll let you close the debate, but I'm just going to say a couple of things. So. Uh, this was uh, included in our LTP last year, and I understand completely where Councillor Skandrit is coming from in terms of um, the impact on rates, but the impact on rates is in the following financial year, so there's no impact on rates in the annual plan that we're considering at the moment, and given that it's 0.01% in 2020, 2021, it does give us time to, to actually look for those savings so that there isn't a rates impact. Um, I, I would be looking for a, a rates neutral approach in this financial year if it had fallen here, but I'm confident um, about where this falls. I agree with what Yanni said because the Tourism Infrastructure Fund uh, you know, may not be successful and it may be that there are other funds that should be available as well. But given that this is the beginning of the um, annual plan process, then we have an opportunity to look at what other funds might be available to support this. I, I agree with Councillor Johansson that this is um, exactly the sort of 
situation that you end in when um, larger councils merge with smaller councils uh, and and a, you know long standing. Um, situations which are just not acceptable today, especially with the number of people that go there over Christmas. I think it's um, absolutely vital that we get this water supply right. Have we got three yeah, sure. Um, Andrew. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this really is a, a tidy up from a, an overhang from decision making in last year's long term plan. Um, the reality is that there's advice that should have been provided last year in, in relation to the content of the Mayor's report, and particularly in the context of the, um, the funding source that was identified for this project at the time. We identified the renewals budget as the correct funding source. Um, in fact, this isn't a renewal, um, and therefore that wasn't the source that should have been identified. So doing this today just allows us to tidy that up. I appreciate that there is an impact in, in, on rates in, in that out year. Um, which wasn't anticipated when we made the decision last year. But the reality is we did make the decision. We communicated that back to the community. We have raised an expectation that this will happen. And over and above that, this is absolutely the right thing to do. I'm advised that this is the biggest public health risk around drinking water that we have in the city. Yes, there's a small residential community in O'Kane's Bay, but there's also a school, there's the museum, and there's a camping ground which we operate, which has 500 people there at any given time, um, <coughs> where we currently grant ourselves an exemption around drinking water. So there's significant risk in the current situation, which is a, a water supply um, which comes from a, a natural stream that runs through a cattle paddock which is piped through a community owned scheme which isn't currently consented. So um, I think it becomes very clear that we need to do something about this. That's why we decided to do it last year. I certainly appreciate your support for tidying this up so that we can give the required level of um, confidence to the community that we're going to do what we said we were going to do. Thank you. So I'll put um, one and two I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. no. That's carried. So um, Tim Scandra. And uh, I'll put item number three. Uh, all those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Thank you very much. Um, so the other... Uh, do, do, Yanni, do, do you want to move an amendment? Well, I wanted a, no a noting provision request. Oh, right, noting provision. Um, that the council is currently reviewing the central city yeah, development did, did contributions and incentives. Did we get a, yeah, a noting provision sent through? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, note that the council is part of the 8011 central city residential program already has a review underway. Well, take out the word already. So has a review underway of potential incentives that may assist further residential development described as Project B2 funding and incentives in the 8011 programme. This review will be presented back to the Central City Development Forum and Council prior to June 2019 so as to inform the final 29 annual plan if applicable. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right, so um, that can be just included. Um, I moved it, Mike seconded it. Mike, are you happy for that wording just to appear as a noting provision? Thank you. All right. Can I just extend my thanks to Yanni with, uh, with finding a yeah. very sensible way forward with that too? No, it's a good, good way forward. All right, so I think that's all the amendments. So I might just adjourn us for morning tea. Oh, we're going to come back to um, the uh, glyphosate. Glyphosate. Sorry, I'm going to one day, one day, one day, Roger Fitch. Okay. So if if we could come back here at uh, I'd say ten past eleven, that gives us twenty minutes.
very much. Um, right, so now we move back to the um, glyphosate <laughs> and uh, the um, parks and roads budgets um, and some suggested change in wording that I think helps us uh, respond to the to the to the issue around the the, the certainty for the May 2019 city growth rates. So, um, so do you want to give us some feedback on this, or a, a, is it like crystal clear? We did look at. We went away and reviewed what it would do to the our estimate of the city's growth and where it would push the numbers, and we were very uncomfortable with. Um, adopting the change as it was originally drafted because it, we felt it pushed our estimate of the city's growth beyond where we, um, in our own mind, believe it is based on the figures we get from QV. Right. And so we talked to Councillor Buck and thought it would be better to look at it with a view to signalling what we want to do, but, but able to review it again in May when we have a clearer picture of what the size of the city is. Well, given the smile on Councillor Buck's face, <laughs> I suspect that we, we, we have a, a way forward. So yes. if you would like to move that, Vicky, and, and we'll open it up for debate. That's fine. This mellows it somewhat. So this is a report coming back after they've gotten the certainty around the rates growth, um, and this will then look at, at can, we, can we do this after we've got the numbers from Diane Carroll. Um, Aaron? So I just had a, a question around oh. um, glyphosate and its use by the council. And um, before we made the decision, it would be really good to have a really detailed presentation to the councillors on what we're currently using, how much we're using, uh, why we wouldn't use the glyphosate. I realise there's the Monsanto case, which is, um, which is a benchmark case, uh, but that's in California where uh, yeah, have to write on a coffee cup that coffee causes cancer. So, uh, and it hasn't been outlawed by the EPA. And so there's a number of things around a presentation that I think we need to get and then to know the costs of moving away. Because I don't use spray myself, I'm an urban hippie, uh, but that's not to say that that's how we can manage our gardens. So I would like to see and have that information. And because the other one is where the weeds grow on the edge of asphalt. Will our costs include asphalt and road damage and what that's likely to look like over years if we don't use a product like that at all? Because I would love to see a spray-free city, but we need to know the costs and outcomes of that. So because because um, we're, you know, we're absent past that. standing orders, yeah, we've already resolved that. So we resolved that back in 2016. Um, and the, the resolution back in 2016 was, was not... Um, as uh, um, it wasn't as um, yeah, it, it didn't require us to ban the use of um, glyphosate. It required us to uh, to minimise its use uh, and to, to to remove it from that contact with the public. So that that that's what was the resolution, and what we have um, discovered through the finance and performance committee meeting is that there is we put insufficient money on budget to pay for that. But I think as part of the reporting back, I think it would be worthwhile having the, 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 the background information that supports it. And I'm perfectly happy that councillors get a, um, a further briefing, briefing on it so that everyone's up to speed. Yeah, because one is, yes, you could word it that we didn't put, well, the council didn't put sufficient money on to... Um, to support it, but it also could be that information might come back that it costs a lot more than we thought. But well, it did. So that's uh, the answer. Because, well, no. Now that you have the outcomes, did it? Yeah, we didn't put that much on. Okay. Right. So, okay. Um, but but we'll get that information yeah, that, and make that sure that it's. Yep. And, and I agree with you that it, having a presentation um, would be helpful to support that decision making. <coughs> Thank you. Yep. All right. I'll uh, Sarah. David? Just quickly note that I, um, I'm pretty sure that Council has a service where you can ring up and get your house um, taken off the spraying list for streets. Um, I've seen people talking about it and um, if we could check and make sure that that's a service that people can do so you can register your house and then they don't come and spray the, the weeds outside your place. So. 
David? <laughs> Um, yeah, look, I, I, I'm a little more amenable to it. Now that we've softened the wording, we're looking at sort of reviewing things for further consideration. I think for memory, I was probably the only one that opposed it in the first place. And um, <laughs> so, you know, we've gone from 450k per year to 2.1 million. In, in current costs, our contractors are struggling. Uh, we need 650k just to maintain the current levels of service, which, quite frankly, are woefully inadequate. So our CR, CCR, CSRs are skyrocketing, uh, and um, a report from Jason Rivett said that, that um, the people out there doing it would actually um, like some softening of the council position on when, where and in what circumstances glyphosate could be used, which would be beneficial and lead to increased service delivery and outcome. And in fact, at the moment, you know, we're, we're just, uh, because we are not using um, the likes of Roundup, we are decreasing our uh, amenity mowing and gardening and they're having to take um, a lot of shortcuts to to um, meet the council's position on this and, and I think it's woefully inadequate and I look forward to later in the year to be able to look at this subject with some uh, <coughs> some rationale that that would support, obviously, the staff position or the contractor's position of some softening of this because it's absolutely ludicrous. Our city is going backwards in its garden city image as a consequence. Okay, I'll put the resolution. Oh, Yanni? I just wanted to respond, actually, because, um, you know, I think it's really important to separate out these two these two issues. Um, the use of glyphosate, I, I don't think it's acceptable in this day and age with what we know about it. So I welcome this resolution. Um, the maintenance, I think, and the garden city image is something that this council has identified previously. We've got work underway to improve in that regard, and I welcome that as well. But I, I don't think we should simply blame the lack of um, uh, financial um, money towards uh, not using glyphosate as the reason why our garden city image has gone down. I think it's a huge range of different things that we can do to improve maintenance, including community being involved. Um, you know, just simple things like people that have requested a bigger green bin so that when they mow their neighbouring berm that's not being maintained, that we actually support it. There's a whole bunch of stuff we could do um, to do that. So. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, I don't think we should blame the lack of using glyphosate as the reason why maintenance has gone down in the city. Um, I think we should actually look at how we're doing things, and I welcome that. We're going to do that. Very good. I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. No. It's carried. David East. Thank you. Um, so I think that's all of the amendments around the table. Very good. So we'll now move to um, debate uh, the um, resolution um, to approve and adopt uh, the draft plan to go out for consultation. And uh, I'll kick off the debate. Um, so the, this is um, very much the second year of a three-year uh, operational part of the long-term plan. So every t every every three years, we put together a 10-year long-term plan, and and that includes a 30-year infrastructure strategy. So it does have an a, an outlook. Um, and in the in between years, we produce this annual plan. And this year, uh, there, there haven't been a significant number of changes, or a high level of um, changes that have required us to go out to a special consultative procedure. So we are issuing a consultation document and it does have all of the detail in it. The, the main changes are highlighted so people can see what it is that we are uh, proposing to do um, that is different from year two of the 2018-2028 LTP, and this will amend that, um, but as I say, not in a, a highly significant way. 
I guess the, the, the headline is the focus that has been on getting that level of rates increase down and there has been a real effort gone into making sure that we've been able to achieve that. So um, I think I wrote down 4.92, so I think the CD will have to um, change, be changed to reflect that. I had 4.98 uh, in there um, as part of my um, introduction to it. So, but what I do want to focus on is is just the amount of work that still needs to be done in terms of securing our drinking water status so that we can get rid of the chlorine. And that has been, I mean, every year, pretty much when we've had an annual plan, we've had one of those events occur that has uh, made a significant impact on our ability to um, move forward. And the flooding was obviously the initial one that happened in, in 2014. And then, of course, in 2016, we had the, the fires. Uh, and then uh, we had the loss of our secure drinking water status. And, you know, for me, that was always, it was always like, um, you know, losing accreditation. I remember when I arrived here as the mayor in 2013, we had lost uh, the accreditation <coughs> to issue building consents as a building consent authority um, in the biggest rebuild that the country's ever seen. And, it, you know, for us, our water is who we are, you know, the, the pristine nature of the, of the drinking water that we have beneath us is, um, it is uh, precious. Um, and I believe that uh, we have an absolute uh, obligation on behalf of the residents of Christchurch to get to the position where we can continue um, to distribute that uh, through a, a, a good infrastructure um, that we do have uh, in order to ensure that people can take that water directly from, from its source and, and enjoy it as it comes out of the tap. So our focus now is on not only safe drinking water, but safe drinking water that's good to drink. And the good to drink means that it doesn't taste like chlorine. So uh, that has been a, a huge uh, impact on on our uh, financial position because we've had to bring um, a significant amount of funding forward. So the funding was always there on the budget, but it had to be brought forward in order to meet uh, what is an incredible timetable. I'm really, really proud of what the, uh, the, the team have been able to, um, to deliver and uh, they continue to focus on that end target. So uh, that was the, the one thing that I particularly wanted to call out. I will mention the waste minim minimisation targeted rate. Uh, we are in a, in a global environment. We have the right focus, which is waste minimisation. Um, Eco Central has been caught on the, the sort of increased costs of, uh, of sending um, product overseas and it's, uh, it, 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 it means that there is a cost to us. But it does mean that for uh, quite a long time, uh, as, as ratepayers, we've had a, a, a considerable saving while we're contributing to waste minimisation. So we haven't had to carry the full cost. Um, that would have been applied otherwise. So we, we've got to work hard, and I think we have to work really hard with other centres to make sure that we get what is a New Zealand-wide problem in the context of what is a global problem right. So there's a quite a lot of work to be done there. But um, you know, I'd like to thank everyone who's put a lot of effort into this. Uh, it, it's been a, an enormous task, and um, it, you know, if um, Carol and Di can carry our thanks back to the team, uh, it would be very much appreciated. So I'll open it up for debate. Sarah. Thank you. Um, firstly, I'm really happy to see the increased fees for community hall hire um, go, but disappointed that such large increases sort of made it through into the um, draft annual plan to start with. Um, and I have a feeling that I might have seen those same figures actually on another page in the detailed list, so we might have to... I don't know, Mary, whether we need to look at that. Um, but I'm also really pleased, um, it hasn't been mentioned yet, really, that um, we've been able to bring uh, a lot of the cycleways program back on track without having a rates impact. 
So we've been able to reflect now the um, the increased subsidy or the actual subsidy that the government are going to be putting in with the um, targeted enhanced funding assistance rates. And that means that for our, our ratepayers funding that we already had set aside, we're able to um, nearly quadruple the amount of work on our cycleways that we can do in this year and in the next two years. And we've got those budgeted. One of those we um, heard from a lot of residents um, who had real difficulties biking down Port Hills Road, especially with the new increased truck speeds along um, next to the inland port there, the trucks coming through there, and the long-term plan. People remember those submissions. Um, the original time frame for that cycleway, the Heathcote Express, was um, to start at the end of this year, and now that's back on track, and residents will be able to um, do that uh, safely really soon, which is really good. Um, but as well as getting our cycleways back on track and the emissions down, um, water is the other key thing. And I'm really looking forward to getting the report that um, looks at our reticulation system. Um, so not only removal of the chlorine, but making sure that our whole system um, and the programme of work to do that is on track um, for the future supply of our city is really important. Uh, Phil? Thank you, and um, I certainly agree with um, Councillor Templeton's sentiments around cycleways, for example. I think that, that I'm very glad to see the, the savings that we now have in this budget um, for, you know, there's $20 million additional um, there from the NZTA subsidies. I think it's a real tribute to the Infrastructure Transport Environment Committee that, in fact, you know, we, we have done really good work to date and we'll do more. I'm really impressed at how balanced their budget is. I think there's so many good things in it. I think the amendments today um, add to that. I think it's, it was essential that, for example, we, we looked at what um, could happen at Canes Bay, and we're making sure that Canes Bay, for example, also has safe drinking water. <clears throat> I think it's, it, there's, it's also great that, in fact, as a council, we're able to achieve so much as we have, given what we've been up against in terms of the amount, the number of you know, major assets which we have had to rebuild. Um, and I think, you know, there's no question that the dividends we've received um, from the Christchurch City Holdings assets has been an increase on what we expected by $87 million. And I, I just think some really good things are happening, and that means that we can start, we'll be starting to develop, for example, our, our um, performing arts centre. Um, and, you know, just the size of the capital programme alone is, um, you know, over nearly $540 million that we'll be spending. I do want to make some comments um, around the uniform annual general charge and how that fits with some of our fixed charges. I certainly understand that we have to increase the charges for waste minimisation. I just think it's unfortunate that the, um, and the, it's clear from the tables in, in, our, in the reports that while the increase for the uniform annual general charge is small, and, and in fact, it's a, and it's a principle, there's a principle involved here because this is a set charge, so it won't be part of our progressive rating system. And what it will, will impact on is that there will be, will be an increase for some um, low households who have, have uh, low socioeconomic um, incomes. And I think that's really unfortunate because um, I know that that will impact on some of the people in my ward, in Sprayton. I think as a council, um, I am disappointed really to, to see that as a principle. Um, we know that we live in a city and a country where in fact rich people are getting richer and poorer are getting poorer. And, and the last report was the richest people in our country as a group uh, have more wealth than the other 90%. And I just think as a council we need to really consider just what we're doing to actually heal that divide. How can we actually um, reduce that? And so. Um, I cannot agree with the principle that we are doing this simply because we have not previously raised that uniform annual general charge for a long time. We shouldn't put, be putting up any rate where it isn't necessary. <clears throat> However, o overall, as I say, I, I think we have got, we've made some really great progress w w with our budget and um, I'm very happy to support it. Thank you. Pauline. Thank you. Um, look. I'd like to just add to the uh, transport projects as well that we've been able to bring forward, particularly in the cycleways, and, and I commend the staff for being ready to hit the ground running there um, with additional subsidies of 75% now. Um, that's fantastic. But 
I would like to see that um, spelt out in the consultation document a bit more clearly because we do tend to put our gross figure in and, um, and then we take the um, subsidy in the income stream, whereas if we could put some sort of a net figure in there so people can see actually uh, what we are getting such value for money. Um, because the cycleway project, as you take those 13 MCRs, are over halfway. Um, we've got the planning and the route selection for so many more now, and the delivery is the, is the third phase, if you like, so we're really getting there. Um, and also we talked about the fees and charges and the increases there because we haven't increased for so long and I'm thinking could we possibly put an annual inflationary increase in there to avoid that. Um, I'm really pleased with the, the, uh, the new um, level of rates at uh, 4.96, seems to be changing all the time and actually reducing all the time. Um, that's really, really pleasing to see that and I think people will appreciate the work we've done there to get to that. Um, yeah, we've got to balance the figures, balance the budget, but we've also got to balance the value for money that we deliver on that, and that's really challenging in our environment. Um, we need to work as a city, I think, on reducing our waste, so we reduce our costing for that. We need to reduce our water consumption, and um, you know we need to reduce our emissions. Basically, we need to reduce our environmental impact, and I think we could actually work harder at that as a council and getting that message out there somehow. Um, the maintenance of our footpaths uh, and parks and reserves is a, is a concern. Um, this sits across committees and across budget lines, and we know that it's a source of um, customer satisfaction, um, low customer satisfaction, and that's evidenced by the number of complaints. I mean, even the work we've done in the Dudley with the um, Land Drainage Recovery Programme there, um, beautiful work there. It's just, just absolutely brilliant. If anyone hasn't been along there, I really get you to ask you to get down and have a look. Um, but that's now lacking in maintenance because I think it's, um, I suspect, it's a funding issue. And that's, I think that goes across the board. But I think today we've actually agreed that we will be working with staff for better understanding of what's being done to address these issues between now and June. And, and hopefully we will have a way forward there. Um, in the Mayor's intro on page 173, we, we read the... Um, Focus on our parks, roads and footpaths is a real priority and I think we all agree with that and I think the people in Christchurch agree with that. So I really welcome uh, the attention that we'll be giving and promising to give to our city's image. I also agree with Leanne about the, um, you know, the water supply improvement programme is a credit to the staff. The work we've done on that has stepped up very quickly and um, we'll keep the, um, the foot on the pedal for that. So overall, I thank the staff for all the work on this and uh, support it. Thank you. Glenn. Thank you. I think every council has debates over rates in any given year. Um, disaster or no disaster. <laughs> so uh, it comes as no surprise to us we will always have a robust exchange uh, with our community over the rates uh, because that, that is uh, their, um, their, their kind of primary interaction with the local council but obviously we need income. Uh, our community is uh, reasonably okay with rates as long as they feel that they're being spent uh, responsibly and that's our task to represent them, uh, uh, their views and to ask those questions. I share some of the concerns that Phil has raised over the uh, UAG component of the rates because when you, you look at the, on the face of it, it looks out of proportion and inequitable to the lower valued households and many of us have a social constituency there. Have a concern also over the traffic management plan uh, extra costs, pages 162 to 163. We already have Christchurch GMZ which is entrusted with the major events, uh, our own council with the minor. I'm really concerned over uh, the impact we need more detail and Tim and I have had a chat over these on uh, the viability potentially of some events in the city which we need as part of the city's recovery in my view. On that note, pleasing to see the ongoing uh, budget for planning for the Avon or Takaro cycleway, I think that could be, and uh, the associated uh, land drainage uh, stock banks, that could be a really good first up win. Just looking at the capital endowment funding, it's a non-rates impact. You can see some of the priorities coming through and the decisions we've made. So, uh, you know, some big dollops in there for agencies like 
uh, Christchurch NZ, build back smarter, now healthier homes, you can measure in a home the actual impact of good insulation uh, for that household. You, you can uh, track along that uh, figure in terms of measurable health. So I, I want that applied to, uh, when it comes to signing off at the end of June, I'd really like us to take a hard look at those operational costs over those agencies. But this is our our draft. It's now out for the community to have their uh, thoughts. They will most definitely give us those thoughts. We could have another slice of 17 elected members here. Uh, they would still have been faced with difficult decisions over town hall, chlorine, stadium, cycleways, everything. The thing is, we've been able to make decisions, and I think that's the most important thing. Thank you. Jimmy. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. Yeah, we review the figure based on the staff uh, and uh, present to us earlier. So the this annual plan, the average risk increase 4.92 percentage uh, compared to the uh, long-term plan, the second year of the 2018 to 28, I mean the 5.5. So my view will be welcomed by the all of the repairs, no matter they are rich or they are poor. Because why it means the one aspect uh, uh, our city's aging population, even the some people, you know, they have a luxury house, but there the income is very insufficient. So council take the prudent way, you know, try to reduce those the rates increase. I think that's that's very good. And so that's very good uh, the figure, very good uh, the, the the situation. Second one, if we review those the figure this year, the capital program expenditure, five hundred thirty-eight point one million dollars, and also operating expenditure, five hundred ninety-eight point nine million dollars. So these figures represent, from now on, there's a trend and a tendency that the quite a few of councils have the program or project have been done you know, and open. So from now on, probably our work law you know, will be rely on, focus on the regular maintenance as well as running out the services with more effectively and efficient. So this give us the signal. You know, we need to more kind of focus on the those the task, particular of my fellow council mentioned earlier, like a full pass, the gutter, cause the flood, or porthole, or routing the, uh, the 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 quake. It is kind of or maybe our park, our reserve, our public uh, virtue need to more focus on the, this the, the, the area, give the great pair, give the residents, they have a sense of oh, council do something, you know, and also we take a quick response to meet their needs. But this uh, is the draft annual plan only. We are all aware, you know, the we are seeking the great pair and residents through the uh, consultation. So once they're coming back, give us more kind of clear like, picture, you know, whether in which area you now we need to have a uh, uh, you know, review and have a minor amendment. So I'm quite happy to approve and adopt this uh, draft annual plan for consultation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tim. No, not so hear me. Oh, there we go. Uh, thank you. Look, um, thank you to the staff for the work they've done on this draft annual plan. It's a huge amount of work, and I really do appreciate it. So thank you very much for that. Um, I do have a note of caution, though. In the last less than six years, the last two terms, we've lost 
our building consent accreditation, which was a cornerstone of a local body. So we've had to absorb the cost of that, but yes, we do have, a, I think, a better process, but we've had to go through that, endure that. We've endured major floods, and you could say that the work that we have taken, undertaken to reduce the risk to our ratepayers should have been done 30 years ago. But the work that's being done, when you look at the uh, retention basins, not only are they reducing the risk of flood, but they're also... What? Well, it was very good conditions 30 years ago. Well, look, yeah, well, we've still got what we've got. But, but if we um, look at those retention basins, they're also reducing contamination or designed to reduce contamination to our rivers. So again, we've absorbed a huge cost, but it is to a good end. We've then had major fires. We've then had uh, the changes to our um, requirements to our pump stations and um, adding chlorination to our water. These four things we have absorbed as a council in less than six years. So I think we do have to look at when we have and talk about um, uh, our rates base increasing, etc. I think we do have to look as a council if having some ability to absorb these costs or what is around the corner. So um, I just really want to put that out there so we are aware that we don't, don't have suddenly pools of money to spend. We just have to be cautious on the way we go forward. And when we do make these improvements, our staff are really on to it because they are doing great work on all those, those um, areas. The one thing I am um, disappointed about is the O'Kane's Bay even making it to the debate of the annual plan. Here we are as a city talking about chlorination and complaining about it, but here is a community that is concerned about clean and safe drinking water. We agreed to, to do and undertake the work for that community, irrelevant of whether it's O'Kane's Bay or Cashmere or Fendleton, whoever it could be, that is the underlying thing as a city we should be supplying safe drinking water and clean drinking water. And I really found it surprising that we could not make an adjustment <coughs> after being given um, incorrect information to our capital works program of $2.7 million for this community. This work should be undertaken now. It should have been underway. So I'm really disappointed in that. I'm not quite sure how that happened, but I think as a council we should look at that and examine it and ensure it doesn't happen again. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Anne. <coughs> I'd like to con also congratulate and thank the staff and my fellow councillors for the huge amount of work, hard work done to keep our rates as low as possible. I believe that this has been achieved through a united vision for, uh, to achieve the very best outcome for our residents and, and the city. Pauline's already, re already referred to the Mayor's introduction to this draft annual plan and her assertion that maintenance is absolutely critical to our residents' experience of living here and that the look and feel of the city matters to residents and visitors alike. The focus um, on our parks, roads and footpaths remains a real priority. Mm -hmm. How the city looks and feels is the measure that many residents use to evaluate how well their rates are spent. We're, always, we're all aware that staff are doing their best with limited resources. Um, however, we are also hearing from our residents that they are unhappy with the levels of maintenance. Green spaces are untidy, roads and footpaths are sometimes difficult to negotiate. And I expect that this message will be reinforced through the submissions process. So we must respond to this. I'm hoping we can implement regular updates from staff to inform us on what we are doing to manage this challenge. To identify ways to nimbly respond to complaints and explore ways to use the resources we already have in a more effective manner. And most importantly, do we need more financial resource to achieve the results um, our residents hope for? Are we simply not giving staff enough money to achieve the look and feel for the city we all want? I anticipate more discussion on this matter once we receive feedback from our, our residents. Solutions need to be found and implemented and priorities reassessed. We all love the city and we want it to look its best and to feel a sense of pride in our place. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vicky? Um, so the figure that we have at the moment for the rates is 4.92. I'm hoping with the resolutions that we passed today with the reduction in the contribution to regenerate that we're working towards, that that figure will end up at 4.27. 
Um, so that's the figure I'm um, we, uh, hopeful that we will get to. Um, and that would be a reduction of 3.1 die, because I can see you frowning. <laughs> um, no, you can't. It wasn't a question. I mean, it's a debatable. It's an error that I, I felt I needed to correct. It, but it, it, it's not. Oh, well, I, we're, we're without. I'm happy. We're out of. Are you happy for a. a, a happy, happy. Go for it. Yep. It's just you refer to 4.92, but that's for your. Um, average average re residential, residential property. The yes, over, right. The yes, I understand that. Yes, I understand that. Thank I'm working on the average residential property right. figure that you gave us for a dwelling of five, just over 500,000. 503,000, right. Right. <laughs> right. So in terms of where we've come to in the last five years, I think um, we, it sort of feels like we can finally breathe a wee bit. Um, we've taken $550 million by way of bonds from um, our companies in terms of CCHL helping the city through this. That's been quite a major uh, exercise, a huge exercise. It's over three years. It does mean, and I think people need to understand this, that selling a company would not necessarily result in any more income to the council, just for chance that was going to be um, an issue that got raised this year. I think it's good that we've actually dealt with uh, the major issues now, such as the multi-use arena, so it's not sitting there facing us as an unbudgeted item, and particularly with the issue of chlorine and the wellheads, which where a lot of capital has been brought forward. It does mean that when the government wants to review the whole concept of, um, of what's happening around the three waters, that we really do not now want to be paying for the rest of the South Island's water um, and wastewater. But as I see it, there's no really nasty things still lurking, and I think there are um, some uh, really important things that we haven't emphasised enough, and that is the basic road maintenance, the footpath work, public transport, the repair work that's allowed for within the Capital Acceleration Fund, um, which was, I think, around 40 million, and about 40 million for the red red zone uh, work as well. Sometime during this coming year, we will see the global settlement work um, completed, which I think will also have um, a positive impact for the city. And I think, in relation to the uniform annual general charge, if you look at where it's gone over the last 15 years, it has fallen dramatically. Um, so this increases it marginally. I think we need to sort out where it should be and look at the big picture on that. Um, and, but I think the point that uh, Jimmy made of people who have large uh, houses or, or large value houses, high value houses, but not a lot of cash is important and that we actually need to publicise somewhat more the rates, rebates, which are available to people. I don't think we tell people enough about the fact that they can get that. So I'm optimistic of looking forward to a rates increase of 4.27 for the average value dwelling of just over 500,000. <laughs> Thank you. Erin. Um, yeah, I'll uh, obviously uh, vote for this today because this is just a consultation document. It's uh, not necessarily where we'll, we'll land in June. Um, I uh, don't like our current position on, on rates. Um, they are double and triple the rate of inflation year upon year upon year compounding and uh, that's unaffordable, unsustainable. I realise we've been through some uh, some natural disasters um, and, and quite a collection too, like if you had put them on a t-shirt you'd probably need a size XL to fit them all on, um, but that's the world we live in and the world will keep changing and uh, the city will face problems again in the future, we'll get another surprise in the next year where we'll go we didn't see that coming. Uh, because that's what happens about every year or 18 months in Christchurch. So my, wor my words of warning around this is those increases and it's will we hear from the public that complain all year but don't come into the annual plan and the long term plan. We seem to hear from everyone who wants something but we don't hear from the thousands of people that don't want anything and don't want the council to keep spending and don't want lots of libraries and don't want lots of swimming pools and all of those, we need to hear more from those people because I don't think their story is told enough and people feel that they always have to come and see us when they want something, not the other way around. And uh, we often give in 
and we increase budgets, we bring things forward. We're living in a very luxurious city. Um, uh, some parts of it are incredibly amazing. We put in uh, the Ferrari version when the Toyota would have been perfectly fine uh, across lots of stuff we build. And I just find it not affordable, not sustainable. So it'll be good to hear from people that um, feel the same way rather than just seeing all their comments on stuff. Unless it's one person that can type fast and does lots with like 600 different accounts, but I'm assuming it's not. Um, because you run into the odd one at the supermarket who ambushes you and gets angry at the council for two seconds and then uh, walks away. So let's hear from those people this year uh, and let's um, listen to what they have to say and hopefully uh, we can uh, not keep increasing year upon year uh, well beyond the rate of inflation because all the bottom end incomes tend to only go up around the rate of inflation if you're lucky. And we've got a massive population of retired people coming, and most of them aren't going to retire that rich. So my intention is to work till the day I die, or I may finish the day before. Um, and another number of other people have to do the same. I enjoy work, so it's not a problem for me. But some people look forward to that golden age of 65, and uh, <laughs> it won't be that golden. It'll probably be more like lead. <laughs> uh, Jamie. Um, look, wholesale change isn't set in an annual plan. It's the tweaking of a budget exercise. So the next annual uh, plan, um, uh, sorry, the next long-term plan process will be 2020. And I think from, from my perspective, going back to the annual plan, the, the two top goals for, for this piece of work is the trimming of the projected rates rises from uh, what the LTP has projected and doing all we can possibly do to get the chlorine out of our water supply as fast as humanly possible. Um, but I, I wouldn't kid ourselves that, um, that the rate rises or where they're at um, are, are a good thing. 4.92 isn't good, 4.5 isn't good, 4 isn't good. Um, remember these are average rises as well. So that percentage is higher if your house is worth more than $500,000. No, it's the other way around. Oh, sorry. Oh. Oh, the, the annual general charge. Yes, but but as far as a rate, the average rates rise percentage from from dollar wise, from dollar wise. Yes, is. dollar wise. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, well, not necessarily because just Sorry, a lot of people on the lower incomes. We don't mean to. Um, a lot of people on the lower incomes aren't necessarily um, aren't necessarily the homeowners minute. themselves. <laughs> um, so the ones that does tend to hit the hardest are those on, on the fixed incomes. So I think it, it's also completely unfair to anyone, anyone in the city, whose wages are not rising uh, um, higher than uh, than the than the rates rises. So it's a gradual creep, and this is something that we all contend with. Uh, that that you hear the grumbles, but I think deep down people don't truly understand how unsustainable this way of charging is. And as mm. long as those rises are higher than inflation, it is ultimately unsustainable. And it's just a matter of time of when that implosion will happen. So this isn't by any means isolated to Christchurch, um, but I don't think that there's any reason that we shouldn't lead the charge on that. So I'd love to see that as the challenge for the next uh, long-term plan. Um, I think we need to radically review how those rates are charged and how income is generated and how the city spends ratepayer money. There was talk of um, you know, the asset sales and everything like that. That's probably not going to be an appropriate place in the, in the annual plan. And I think what would also be more inappropriate would be for any funds realised from that uh, to go into pet projects. I don't think that would be the intention of it. I think um, uh, you'd be essentially reducing debt, which isn't as exciting, but it's not going to capital expenditure because capital expenditure um, simply leads to operational expenditure. Um, but again, today isn't the day for that. I think we've had you know, still a lot of challenges in front of us, even with this tweaking. And by and large, I think that we're in a good space uh, with that. Um, this is a discussion document, so we're going to welcome input from the community. Uh, and before, uh, before I sign off with that, I'd just like to thank colleagues for all your work around, uh, around this. It, it still is a long process. And um, most importantly, staff as well, who put in a tremendous amount of time, and we greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Perfect timing. David. <coughs> uh, thanks. Look, I, I'm really pleased to see that um, we've had a uh, proposed rates increase less than 5% and currently sitting at 4.92. And I generally support the thrust of the annual plan. Uh, for me, uh, chlorine removal and the security of our wellheads remains a high priority 
as does the completion of the major projects, the Convention Centre, Metro Sports and the multi-use arena. Uh, I also think that actual prioritisation of roading renewals and repairs is a significant project that needs elected member oversight. Uh, equity across the city in, in responding to repairs and maintenance and needs is also an issue that I think needs um, some over, um, oversight from elected members. Um, a large proportion of the decrease in our rates this time round is uh, due to underestimation of growth and that's something that we can't rely on uh, going forward. So we're proposing a 4.92% at this stage as our rates increase for this annual plan and I trust that following consultation this figure stays or reduces further. Because we've found savings doesn't mean to say we need to spend it. And I do support the comments that Aaron, both Aaron and Jamie have made just a few moments ago about um, looking at uh, where we're going, uh, compounding rates and rises over the years and, and looking at um, further savings and further methods of uh, financing uh, council operations is something that really, really needs to be uh, given a high priority. I also think, you know, uh, other councillors made the point about you know, consultation and, and some of our uh, communities perhaps not bothering or don't sort of feel comfortable um, coming to the consultation sessions that we have and I've long <coughs> held a view that our method of consultation and hearings is outdated, uh, doesn't sort of uh, sit, the, sit comfortably in the, in the modern world and we need to find better ways of engaging with our community and actually getting a feeling uh, for where things sit. So um, I think it's a well-balanced annual plan and uh, let's keep it that way. Thank you. Uh, Andrew? Thank you. Um, like others, I'm pleased to see the rates increase at a lower level than was projected for this financial year in the um, LTP last year. Um, but I'd also hope that we can find ways of further reducing this increase between now and June when we make our final decisions. We heard from the community through the LTP conversations last year about the effects of these rates increases and it's good to be able to reflect back on those messages with a lower than projected rates increase in front of us now. We also need to consider how that rate increase is shared across the community how the way that we charge rates achieves the best social outcomes for the city, <coughs> what affordability across different communities really looks like, how this supports the kind of city that we want to live in. Um, and I'd be very wary of proposals that turn this whole thing on its head and that quite possibly see those that are least able to afford a higher burden of rates um, with that placed at their fees in, in a future long-term plan. We also need to look at ways that we can better achieve value for money how we spend as well as what we spend, how we do maintenance, the future role of Regenerate Christchurch and what its funding level might need to be would both be really good examples of this. But the other thing that this plan does is reflects on the work that we've done over successive years as a council to create and stick to a coherent and sensible financial strategy which is seen as contain rates increases to a lot less than they could have been and to continue to plan to reduce these rates increases in future at the same time as delivering business as usual services and a huge capital program including some major um, earthquake recovery and um, regeneration and reinstatement projects. The role that our significant asset base has played and our resulting ability to be able to release significant amounts of capital through CCHL has been a real cornerstone of that financial strategy and I'd hate to see that unravel or overturned by a future council. For the length of time I've been sitting at this table, we've been good custodians of our finances and our assets in very challenging circumstances. And that, I think, will be one of the things that will be seen as a legacy of this council and the last. And I believe that it's incumbent on a future council not to U-turn, but to continue to do the same. And it worries me today to hear talk of what a future council might do with funds realised from asset sales, as that would actually represent an unravelling of the successful financial strategy that we've seen. I take the opportunity to thank staff um, for their work in preparing this draft, 
but also for the work done in the past few years to allow us to achieve what we have achieved. And I'd also take the opportunity to acknowledge the collaborative approach of colleagues working together to achieve this, both in the past and even in the way that we've dealt with the amendments mm -hmm. um, around this table today. So as I always say at draft um, annual plan time, I absolutely look forward to hearing from our community about whether we've got the priorities right. Um, and I hope that we get some quality submissions to the annual plan that give us something to work with that do see us making some changes to this so that we're really achieving what the community wants with the annual plan um, when we come to make final decisions, decisions in um, June of this year. Thank you. Yanni. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just wanted to um, raise several points in regards to this document. This is going out for consultation, but I would like you to put um, B separate, which is the one which increases the uniform annual general charge. Um, and just specifically responding to that, actually what what is not clear from this document is that the flat fee for waste is going up considerably, which on top of the UAG charge has a higher disproportionately uh, percentage to those on the on the lower property values and I think that's not the right way to go so I am opposed to that um, but I just want to talk about um, several points in terms of this draft plan one totally endorse the need to look at the cost of doing things as we go through the submission process we need to start thinking about why things cost so much and how we can do them in a more affordable way construction costs agency costs consultancy costs just all seem to be adding up to this huge financial challenge that we face. We need to get on top of it, and there's some mechanisms in here that are starting to look at that. We also need to start getting regional funding mechanisms in place with our neighbouring territorial authorities and with ECAN over things like the Metro's uh, multi-use arena. Uh, this is a, going to be a regional asset, and yet we have been left picking up the full cost of it with central government. Um, second, we need to start cleaning up our city. We need to clean up our parks, our roads, and our waterways, and we also need to keep fixing our own damaged buildings and our own broken social housing. I still think we've got a long way to go to get back to a state that we were before the earthquake hit. No one should underestimate that challenge ahead. Uh, the third point I want to raise is the balance between the central city and the suburbs. Again, in this budget, there's still a huge preference for funding of things in the central city at a time when our suburbs are crying out for things to be fixed, especially the broken infrastructure such as the roads, the footpaths uh, and the water supply network. I totally endorse the idea of getting chlorine out of our water as soon as possible and upgrading our pump stations, but the bigger risk is our reticulated network which isn't getting, the, I think, the right funding and we are seeing post uh, skirt the continued breakdown of those water mains. Um, five, it's really important that, uh, sorry, four, we need to get on and, and look at the PT infrastructure and we need a coordinated approach so that the people in Limwood, for example, get a decent public transport interchange, not just an intersection safety improvement that's reallocated. Uh, and final point I wanted to make is that we really need meaningful consultation, engagement and planning. We need information that is clearly able to be understood, that clearly show what changes are proposed and why and that put community at the heart of our planning. And I think as this uh, document is agreed today, let's look at the tools and all the uh, abilities that we have to ensure that people can participate in this process. I think that's really important based on what our resident surveys are telling us. So I welcome that opportunity. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so it feels like the council seems to be getting on top of the capital work program, which is really good. So I just wanted to say thank you to, um, you know, to all the work that everybody has actually been putting into getting on top of that, because it's really good to now see in the annual plan and all that sort of stuff the detailed approach to what the capital works are, what's going to be spent where. There's $538 million set aside for that over 900 plus projects over the next financial year. So, you know, it's a lot of work, um, and there's good data on that. Um, it's a shame that we still can't get uh, a plan nailed for how we're going to fix all those Grade 5 roads. Um, it seems like Treasury are holding us up a little bit in that respect, which is a shame, and I'd like to see that sort of come back to us as soon as possible before hopefully we can sign off on this annual plan so we can actually get a plan out to the public about how we're going to get some of those uh, Grade 5 roads that we promised to get fixed, fixed through that CRAF project. 
Um, but one of the things that I still am disappointed in in the plans is the, um, the lack of oversight that we get um, and that the public will get around the uh, council operating costs. So OPEX in the city is quite expensive and I've just been doing some sort of research over other cities in the country and um, we're probably the second most expensive city to run in New Zealand from what I can gather from the OPEX costs from the annual, uh, annual reports that have been going through. So what I'd like to do or what I'd like to see is us to drill down a little bit more uh, in that area to make a real impact on getting rates down because 5% has been said before is not sustainable, it's not going to be sustainable and the only real way we're going to make changes and that is to look at how the operational costs of the council are going to move forward. Um, so budgets broken down and all that kind of stuff so actually people can see those when we're looking at our annual plans and long term plans. The next time to look at that will be the long term plan uh, so I, you know, I'd look forward to seeing us work towards that as well. Um, a couple of points that were noted, asset sales, probably not a good way to sort of raise money and, and uh, reduce costs. Uh, we've already you know, worked to release a lot of capital from those programs, but we need to be working on ways that we can actually start getting more money out of our assets that we have, because as we can see, we're sort of topping up some of our non-performing companies. We've got some more money coming into um, VBase, and you know we can't continue to do that. We need to look at our companies and actually understand, are they giving us value for money? If they're not, then what do we do with them to move um, so we actually aren't spending more money, ratepayers' money, on topping those up? Uh, the other last point, uh, that I want to make is that we do, as councils and in, in across the country, need to work on how we fund um, the council and the city operation. I don't think rates is going to work indefinitely ever. We need to think about, as a nation, how we actually fund councils and actually um, spend or, or actually operate cities. So I just wanted to leave it on that point um, because it's a very big point that we need to start thinking about seriously. Thank you. Right. Any further? Contributions. I'll put the motion. Oh, so uh, we want a separate one. Which one do you want held separate? That B. So everything apart from B. Um, I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. I'll put one B. Um, all those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's um, Yanni, Glenn and Phil. Thank you. So um, now we move on to the, that's carried, and I'll move on to the next resolution which is um, that council approves and adopts for consultation the consultation document um, and do I have a seconder for that? And the consultation method. Um, Andrew, uh, so I'll just, um, I'll just uh, comment briefly. I mean, obviously the consultation document starts with a, an introduction uh, from me, and uh, it has highlighted some of the things that have been uh, discussed in the debate that we've just had. Uh, in terms of the consultation, I'm really picking up on what people have said about the consultation. And I think, you know, I really do want to encourage um, uh, you know, the local communities to, to think about coming together to put together um, submissions so that uh, it, it, they're not so much individual but they're actually thinking about their local communities. Um, we're going to refer, as I said earlier on in the piece, or I may not have said it out loud, but we're going to refer the submissions that come in around community projects uh, through to the community boards so that the community boards can actually assess them and, um, and and give them some weighting and when they come and make their submissions right at the beginning of the hearings process then that will enable us to get a real sense of what the community is saying so that, and they will understand what their local communities are saying as well. Uh, I'm, it's a bit of a, an experiment to, to trial a new way of, of doing that, but actually really picking up on what David said before is, is actually focusing um, on the broader community issues and the priorities being set by the local communities. So uh, I do encourage people to 
um, provide submissions. I, I can reassure people that we do read the submissions uh, and uh, we will allow for um, hearing times for those that want to present oral submissions. I know that some community boards, they go out into their local malls and, uh, and shopping centres and, and uh, you know, help encourage and stimulate conversations about it. So, you know, that, that there is no wrong door in terms of, um, you know, sending in your, your views. And um, the... Uh, this, the period for submissions will run from the 1st of March to the 1st of April. I'm, I'm writing a little article at the moment, but I'm suggesting that people, uh, if they want to get a head start on that process, then today's agenda does provide them with all of the information that they'll need to make their sub submission. So does anyone else want to comment on it? Otherwise, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried, and I'll move that uh, standing orders um, X, Y, and Z now apply. And a full will second that motion. Um, I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Um, I declare the meeting closed. <laughs> Thank you very much. Great. Cool. Yeah.